May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Jesus is alive and well, and this matters greatly. Because when we proclaim that Christ is risen, we are pledging our allegiance, not to the ways of the world, but to the way of Jesus, which is the way of unconditional love. It means living as a resurrection people in a world stuck in Good Friday. We pledge allegiance to God's preferred and promised future for the world and not to the empire that breaks bones, either on the cross or even back in Ezekiel's valley. Just last night we heard the story. You may know it. Ezekiel stands in a windy, desolate, sand-swept valley, surveying the remains of a broken and desolate people. These dead were victims of a murderous regime, and now all that's left is a pile of bones cracked and bleached in the merciless sun. There must have been a brutal battle, the aftermath of which Ezekiel surveys with a broken heart. And then God calls the question. O mortal, God says, can these bones live? And this is the day when the ways of the Good Friday world want to say, well, no, probably not. They're dead. The other army was bigger and badder. These bones are dead. The story is not over. Because Yahweh then thunders to Ezekiel, prophesy, mortal. It is as if Yahweh is saying, speak life into the very face of death. Speak life to a world that expects domination. Speak life to a world that isn't sure whether the way of the cross makes any sense right now. Speak life to a world that stares into the tomb and with reason fully expects death to have the last word. For this is the day when we watch, when we hold that liminal space where God makes paradox, that space between death and living, what Augustine called the Paschal Mystery. When we hold vigil with the apostles in that upper room, because our teacher and savior Christ just last night was laying dead in the tomb. And so here gathered, we wonder whether the gospel announcement still holds in the face of death, in the face of a Good Friday world. Is the way of the cross still relevant? Or will it get you knocked down, dragged out, silenced, and dead? Can we safely and responsibly bet the ranch on love for neighbor as self? Or should I just take care of me and you just take care of you and let everybody else deal with their own mess? We start to wonder if that really is the way the world works, or at least the path we reluctantly must follow if we are to survive. Because I don't know if you noticed, but Jesus just last night lay dead in the tomb. And this is the day when we wonder if the way of the cross truly is foolishness. It sounds good in Sunday school, but please, this is the real world. And so facing the desolate dark of the tomb, it is indeed tempting to discount the way of Jesus as naive. Inspiring, but naive. It's tempting to dismiss this as a disappointed hope. A good idea, but not realistic, at least not here, not now. Maybe there is no such thing as a gift with strings not attached. Maybe the strong really are the only ones who survive. Maybe you just look out for you and climb on top of everybody else. A zero-sum game with zero winners and seven billion losers. And so we watch and we wait 
and we wonder whether death still has its sting. And yet, and yet this is the day when the stars have yet again turned to dawn. This is the day when that great stone which had been blocking the tomb crushes rocks as it rolls to the side. For God is making an announcement that echoes off the walls of an empty tomb. And the women are about to come sprinting back into our lives, delivering news so good we wonder if it can be true. We yearn, we yearn for God to speak life to a world so accustomed to death. Yet Jesus shows that love of God and love of neighbor, uh, love of neighbor as self is the way of life. He laid down his life for his friends, and this is what we call the way of the cross. And so this is the day when God pronounces and calls us to pronounce to a world so accustomed to death that this is true. Yes, this is true. Yes, love really is stronger than hate. Because rather than scrambling on top of each other, love calls us to care for the whole family of God. And this is God's great hope for the world. Yes, life truly is stronger than death. Yes, Jesus is alive and well. And this truth calls us to hope which is profound. As William Sloan Coffin writes, Hope arouses, as nothing else can arouse, passion for the possible. Hope arouses as nothing else can arouse a passion for the possible. Indeed, as the old song goes, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Perhaps you are wandering the Red Sea shore with Pharaoh hot on your heels, waiting for God to make a way out of no way because he lives. I can face tomorrow. Or maybe you're scrambling Ezekiel's valley of dry bones, wondering how those rattled bones might ever live again. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Or locked in the upper room with the disciples for fear, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Or perhaps you're out of work and wondering how he will ever pay the bills. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Or perhaps you're stuck in a terrible fight with family or friends and you can not imagine how you'll get out. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Perhaps this is your first time back in church for a long time because you're recovering from an illness or coming back from chemo. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. I like to think of God with a shoulder on the boulder. Even still, with the giant rocks that block us from walking into God's hope for the world. And so, what stones might God still roll out of your way this day? Dear friends, living as Easter people means trusting God to roll those stones too. It means that your Easter basket is full of rocks but now they've been crushed into new soil. Obstacles obliterated, and now possibility pokes its tiny green tendrils out of this damp earth, like wheat that springeth green. And just after we thought the seed had died, hope arouses as nothing can arouse, a passion for the possible. We are called indeed, as former Dean San Lloyd called us to, defiant hope. Indeed, we worship a rock rolling and a stone crushing God. God turns obstacles into fertile ground, and I have seen this and I know this to be true. There is hope in this truth that will carry us through the dark night of the soul. Because he lives, 
I can face tomorrow. I have seen people stand and say amen in the midst of unspeakable tragedy, holding to this truth as if it were their life raft in a swirling sea of despair. If Easter tells us anything, if Easter tells us anything, it is that God knows how to keep a promise and that God will keep a promise every time. You and I, we still can, and we still must, trust in the promises of God. For God says, a new heart I give to you, a new spirit I will put in you, you shall be my people and I will be your God. God says the Messiah will suffer and rise again on the third day, and indeed the giant stone was rolled away. The tomb was empty and out walked the resurrected Christ. This is the day, friends, when we proclaim allegiance to the way of the living Christ, which is the way of love, the way of hope, and the way of abundant life. Death did not get the last word. God did. Death did not get the last word, God did. And God's word was then, is now, and ever shall be love. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Alleluia, alleluia.